Ladies and gentlemen, now today I'm proper happy because we managed to have a very cheeky run at Final Boss Gotha and get that number one spot. We got just under 3,900 with the Merlin Weinhardt Lilia team. And I'm just going to walk you through the try in today's video. So we start off by deranking Gotha. He's got two silver. This is absolutely perfect. But then also we go for a merger. So I've kind of found that phase one, I want to get through it as quickly as possible because phase one is a little bit annoying. I like Merlin's ultimate because I don't really have like too much single target outside of her ultimate and Weinhardt's ultimate, but Gotha always goes for Weinhardt, so I need to rush her ultimate in order to push the phase. Um, but yeah, we've got a pretty exciting next turn as well because we can use Merlin's rank down, we can also go for the drain, um, and what other card do we use next turn? It might be a Lilia card as well, but let's see on this one. I think the card we use here is actually Merlin's Bronze Single Target card, uh, just in order to like dump it and get rid of it, because that card we really, you know, don't need. Whereas the heals like are going to be very valuable next phase as well, especially when we want to get rid of debuffs. So yeah, I was kind of debating this one for a second, whether or not I should use a Lilia heal, um, but you know, there's not really any point and it has a lot more value points wise next turn if it's just removing tons of debuffs. So yeah, we get the rank down on Gotha, as you can see so many points from that as well a ton of additional damage going for the single target there and we've lined up a pretty good next turn i think we go for uh double weinhardt cards here uh the one where he's like looking away <laughs> i forgot the name of it but you you'll see what I, i'm talking about in a second because we want to save the um uh, the other ones for the final phase uh, just because they have stance disable and that gives you even more points as well so we fire off two of these bad boys the flash arrow there that is the official name of the card uh, but doing the cleave you know we were able to maximize damage thus maximizing points there as well nice little tidy finish very very quickly into that second phase and really on that this fight you know that's what you want to do the second phase is just uh, much easier much safer for the most part to kind of build up stuff and just get massive, massive points. Now, one thing you're going to see me do here is I actually... Um uh, when possible, I save Lilia's Drain all the way up to a gold card, and I wait till my opponent is, like, either ready to use ult, or at least has, like, three ult on every single character. That way I can maximize the drain effectiveness, but also maximize the points I get. But for this very first turn, I think we just go for Wyan Heart and then a Merlin card there. So that one is just for the, the 30 points, so really nothing super special that turn. Uh, but also using the silver, we got the stance disable there, so all in all that silver card was like 35 additional points on blue Merlin she really is just a point machine for this fight but it's mainly like that uh, area of effect like rank down everybody that's giving you the big big points on Merlin uh, so yeah next turn we throw off Lilia's ult then we go for the gold heal and then I think we throw off Weinhardt silver just because uh, very often in the um uh, this phase, it's difficult to get off uh, silvers on Weinhardt. You need to make sure you use the uh, remove debuffs from Lilia and then fire them off. This one also applies stance disable. So you can see left hand side, we get like 45 additional points for firing off that silver card uh, on top of the damage as well, which is very, very nice there. So uh, yeah, we're just getting beaten up a little bit, but we've ranked down a skill. So there's nothing that's like super detrimental at the moment. Next turn, man, I'm seeing he's got a gold and a silver here. So I'm like, okay, let's go for this, man. So I think we go for uh, the ultimate that side. And I'm kind of debating here whether or not I want to use another rank down. I think here, because the run's going so well, I just decide to go for the Weinhardt card of lesser value, which is the Flash Arrow. Uh, so yeah, we fire off that, we rank down, we get tons of value from that. And I think it was was probably the right play to uh, save that rank down, man. Just because you want to make sure ideally every single turn you can rank down and just keep on stacking up those points. Uh, so here, we've actually got a hand that plays into itself quite nicely. I think this turn we go for uh, like Merlin's single target into one of the golems again uh the goal is if you want to get massive points you want to cleave gotha down slowly while just getting as many points as you possibly can from all the additional criteria like um 
uh, you know, hitting everybody, draining alt gauge, uh, ranking down cards. So that really is the core of like a big point strategy if you're looking to maximize that and easily get in the top 5%. Um, so yeah, nice little rank down there. A really, really good draw. So at this point, man, uh, I'm like, dude, that was a sick merger on Lilia. We've got a very easy way to kind of maneuver our way to a gold card here as well. So I'm just trying to figure out like how to play this hand. But I'm like, if I use everything aside from the Lilia drains, then they all merge into each other. So I think we fire off uh, Merlin's ult. Uh, so we go for the skill rank down, uh, even though I didn't really need to use it because there's nothing there. I'm hoping he's got something in his hand, but I just wanted like the very convenient merger on Lilia uh, just because that means we draw so many additional cards the next turn. So that... Um uh, you know, does work out really nicely. Uh, with that silver card as well, we got the stance disable, so additional points there. Uh, ultimates give a solid amount of points. I think it's like 50 points per ultimate that you fire off. Uh, so yeah, going quite well so far as you can see. And we've got a gold drain, which is gonna, like, the drain just gives you a ridiculous amount of points, man. It's so, so crazy. And then this follow-up turn, we can basically just negate the majority of their turns. So we go for Lilia's ult, then we go straight into a golden drain. Uh, uh, and just look at the points as soon as we fire off, like, the stuff this turn, man. It just starts racking up like crazy. So the points just tallying up. The gold drain just depletes three alt gauge from everybody and just stacks up a mad amount of points. Like, in that final phase, to really get the most points, you do want to save up for that gold drain, at least in my experience, because it seems to be a little bit more beneficial in comparison to using two silvers. Um, but again, I may, I may be wrong on that. You know, it's just, like, what I found so far in my more successful runs um uh, have been whenever I've saved up for gold drains instead of just spamming the silver when I do have them. Because also, a secondary part of this fight uh, is you do need to maximize the amount you can drain, because if either golem get to their ultimate, then you're just dead as well. Uh, so that's not too great. So here, I merged Merlin's uh, rank down, so I could also deplete ult gauge as well. So we've got a ton of additional bonus points there. It was really, really good on the draw. And I think this turn, I'm kind of like debating what I want to do. Like, one of the golems has um, a taunt here, but I'm like, if I merge on Lilia, and then if I go for the cleave, I don't think Gotha dies. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I've got a good play. I can get some solid points this turn, but then we can line up a triple alt turn next turn, and then fire off like a single target left, a single target right, and then go for like the massive AoE, and just, you know, like deal loads of damage, finish off the fight, and get a ton of points there. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the, the god tier run in just over seven and a bit minutes. Uh, about to finish off in a magical fashion here. Yeah. And I got a little bit too excited um, uh, as soon as we take Gotha down, as you're going to see. And I went like straight to the leaderboard to see if I was number one. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been, I've been trying way too hard today, man. But also, I love the final bosses, man. They're really, really fun. So we fire off the ult. As you can see, we get like uh, 50 points for that. Uh, fire off another ult that side. We get an additional 50 points for that. We fire off Lilia's ult. Everybody dies. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's winner, winner chicken dinner. Straight to uh, almost 3.9k there. Uh, so, yeah, that was crazy, man. I was so gassed. I was so excited when I saw that score pop up because, uh, again, I've just been running this fight so much this afternoon. So it felt amazing. But, uh, yeah, I went, like, straight to the leaderboard after this. So apologies that I didn't... Um uh, bring up the fight breakdown to have a bit of a closer look at exactly how the points were tallied. Uh, so yeah, that's my bad. But as you can see, straight away, number one. So yeah, honestly, man, I was so gassed. It felt amazing. I never thought I'd be up there number one on final boss. But again, it's probably not going to last too long. So hopefully you did enjoy that very cheeky take down there. We're just having a look at some of the teams, you know, in the top 10 at the moment. I see a lot of other people are going for King instead of Weinhardt. I think in certain scenarios, King, you know, might rear a head. But overall, I don't know, man. I just feel like Wineheart, he's just consistently got value in his cards. Like, even when there's nothing, like, super crazy, it's just, like, 30 points every turn. And it's kind of, like, guaranteed cleave. So it's a little bit less RNG dependent. The lifesteal food keeps him topped up really, really nicely as well. Uh, so, yeah, I really do like Wineheart, man. And also the additional points from, like, Stance Disable uh, really do add up quite nicely. Um, but, again, I see just everybody's going for king this person here mad us going for house some sort of crazy cleave team there uh so yeah I, I i guess that's kind of like a similar strategy to um 
uh, using Wineheart, if you look at the core of the strategy, um, but I would say he's like more effective because of the stance disable. <laughs> so yeah, that's a bit of a curious one there. I didn't think there's, oh, okay, Chris, rank seven, he's using Wineheart as well. He's definitely aboard the hype train there. And we've got another person, Pinky from Madness, using Hauser. Uh, so yeah, it's been very interesting, kind of battling with everybody today, man, because I got to two, like, uh, I think it was, um, an hour and a half uh, before this. Um, and then I just quickly got pushed down to number five. So I was like, dude, I need to go even harder. Have an even crazier try. But I also don't think this try is solid enough to be rank one throughout the entire event. I reckon in like an hour or two, man, somebody will be at like 3.9 or 4K. I think with like the craziest RNG in the world, you might even be able to get like 4.1, 4.2K. But again, like throughout the course of the final boss event, it happened with um uh, King people are just doing hundreds and hundreds of runs and eventually like somebody is gonna get that run where just like everything is aligning they're just drawing like you know so many rank downs on Merlin so many drains on Lilia so I think 4.2k I reckon it could happen with this team I think it's entirely possible there uh, but yeah ladies and gentlemen if you did enjoy today's breakdown for final boss Scotha rank number one big daddy score please do smash that like button that'd be greatly appreciate it but aside from that thank you very much for watching take care and I hope that you have an absolutely Absolutely fantastic day.